With the Beat Wiggle you can animate 2D and 3D layers super easily and in a lot of different ways. So let's give you some idea what you can do with it in this project. I just have some random shapes here in front of a white background and my music layer and currently it looks like this. So and now let's animate this a little bit more in sync with the music. So I first select my music here and load it into Beat Edit. And now since these are 2D layers, I make sure that I have here the 2D type selected and then I can play with different presets, yeah? So if I play this back, you can see the 2D peak here is uh, pretty unimpressive. Then I've got some cool thing like a flicker on each beat or I can just let the opacity blink, for example, or some scale pulse, or maybe let's start here with some random position steps where it's essentially just traveling around here. Now, so let's try this one first. We just select all those layers here and click on apply. You can see it generates a lot of keyframes and it's looking like this. Ah, it's an interesting start. Maybe I want it to move a little bit more. So I go into the parameters. Here you can see you've got controls for rotation scale, position and opacity and this preset just uses position and I want here a bit more movement. So I go to like 300 maybe. And also maybe I want this to happen more frequently. So the beats here are not really very fast. If I play this back, I rather w go to beat selection and set my subdivision to two. So I have twice as many moves. So this is how it's looking now. And before we apply this, remember that the beat wiggle always combines its result with the animation that's already there. So we don't want to overlay this new beat wiggle with the one that's already there. So we make sure that we undo the previous beat wiggle such that our layers are not moving anymore. And now I can apply the new one. Oh, and as you can see, now it's mostly moving up and down because I've set this here to 30 instead of 300, what I actually wanted. So let me undo and apply again. And this starts to rock now. So to give this a little bit more energy, I may might also want to give this a scale pulse like this. Ah, so let's try to apply the scale pulse with the default option. So this time I don't undo such that the scale pulse combines with what is already there. Yeah, this is maybe a bit too much of scale, so let me undo this again. And let take a look here in the parameters. The amount is just set to 50, so the reason why it's still so much is if I take a look at the scale of those layers, they are actually all scaled down to 30%. So these layers are usually much bigger, so if we add 50 on top of this, it goes from 30 to 80, which is like more than twice as much as the original value is. So let's set this here to something like 15, such that on top of the 30 that we already have, we only go up to 45. And this looks pretty cool. Maybe it's a little bit monotonous. Uh, so to give it a little bit more variation, what I now want to do is like at every full speed, something more special should happen. So let me go to the beat selection, say one beat every four beats is what I want to select now. And I play back. And I go back to my beat wiggle. And what do we have that looks pretty interesting? The position flicker is like a bit crazy. You can see it flickers around at each beat like crazy and then goes back to its original position. So let's overlay this with what we already have so far. So I don't undo and let me take a look at the position keyframes. So currently you can see we have at each beat a little bit of traveling here and you can see those, see those in those keyframes. And now if I apply the new preset, you can see that some of those stay but in some regions you see even in the keyframe pattern here that the new iteration overlays with the existing animation. Now every four speed we should have this crazy position flicker and in the other ones we have only the normal move. So let's take a look how this is looking like. So this is how you work with the beat wiggle. Yeah, you best first play with the presets and then adjust the parameters as needed and don't hesitate to apply more than one round of the beat wiggle on the layers. Now let's take a little bit more in detailed look at the parameters. So first of all, you can animate sliders and we've got a separate tutorial for this and layers 2D and 3D. 3D is essentially the same except that you've got different presets and that you've got a nice 3D visualization here and you can see I can zoom around or move around here with my mouse and also zoom out with my scroll wheel for example. 
Now for the parameters. It's essentially the same as for the sliders and if you want to know all details look at the tutorial about animating sliders with a beat wiggle. So the most important thing is the amount which is like the peak that you see at each beat. If we set this here to 400 for example it's moving twice as far and it's currently only moving in X and you could also move it in Y and Z direction for example. The next we have is a return. If we lower this to zero you can see that it's at each beat moving by this amount but it's not going back anymore because we have no return and at the same time you can see that it's clipping so essentially all the animation currently happens inside our clipping box here and this is because clipping is enabled and set to a loop mode. You can also set it to like ping pong for example which means when it arrived here it will go back again and this is this clipping box so currently it goes from minus 2000 oh we wanted to set it to ping pong so now you can see it goes here back and it changes direction this is a box so from minus 2000 pixels to 2000 pixels in x y and z direction it is clipped this is a little bit different if we go to 2d layers so in 2d layers for the clipping you don't have pixel values but you've got percentages of the comp size yeah so like in 3d space there is nothing like the notion of a 3d comp size but in 2d you have it and so we decided to set the box here to this to a percentage which is pretty nice because the same presets then work nicely with all kinds of resolutions and here the clipping is visualized by this dotted line. So we've got here our crazy position peak simple preset. And if we say, okay, we want to set the clipping range to 50% in X, then the values will always stay in this right half of the composition, for example. So that's essentially it. So you need to understand amount, return, and clipping. All the other parameters are about the peaks themselves, so about the move that happens at each beat. So you have a fade-in duration for this move, a hold duration, and a go-back duration, and some easing. This is discussed in more detail in our tutorial about sliders, so please watch this for all the details. And the last thing to mention here for opacity, for example, and for rotation and scale, you have all these same controls, amount, return, and so on. And of course, very important, on top of the amount, you always have some randomness, or top of everything, essentially. You can go here and always choose some randomness. So if we go, for example, with the simple peak preset, it's looking like this. And if we now say we want to have some randomness here, both sides mean it means it's going up to 200 pixels now, not just to the right, but also to the left. And if we say we can also go 200 in Y, up to 200 in Y direction, now you can see it really goes in any direction randomly. So this is how you animate layers with a beat wiggle. You really have tons of possibilities what you can do there. So have fun experimenting with this, and I see you in the next tutorial.